Greetings YouTube. So I'm making this video um, for this, for not for any particular purpose other than uh, somebody on the Arborist site forum, which I post regularly, um, had contacted me because they were having trouble getting um, their uh, Dutch West India Federal Airtight stove to work properly. And um, they have oil heat and they bought this, or they got it from a friend rather, just can't get the darn thing to work. So I've been going back and forth with this guy for about two weeks now, offering what advice I can give, and he's still having problems. So I figured maybe I'd just show him a video of how I, I get the thing working regularly. Um, he was telling me that it was his first time using a wood stove or even using wood as fuel for heat. Um, I happen to have, I don't think it's the exact same model, but it's very similar. Uh, it operates in the same function. So I'm making this video, uh, hopefully, it might help him or anybody else for that matter who uh, gets a hold of one of these stoves. They're not the best stoves, um, but they work pretty good. We have an 1800 square foot house and um, with a masonry chimney and um, it heats it pretty well. Um, for example, it's been pretty cold the past few days um, with daytime temperatures of around 17 to 18 degrees and it dips down into about 7 to 10 degrees at night. Last night it was about 7 degrees. The wind wasn't blowing as hard, but my wife and I were sitting comfortably inside here at about 72 degrees. So, um, if anybody else has these stoves and wondering how to get them to work properly, uh, this video hopefully will help you, and hopefully it'll help my friend over on Arborist site who uh, is having some struggles. But don't worry, buddy. We'll, we'll get it figured out. Anyway. Um, here it is. This is a uh, Dutch West India Federal Airtight Model FA224CCL. Uh, this house was built in 1992, so I'm assuming that it's probably about that old. Now, this, sorry if the lighting is pretty poor, I have, I have all the lights turned on. <laughs> this unit has three vents. On the bottom you have your lower vent which is used for creating a, an updraft uh, for starting the fire on the side here where you have your side door which is normally where I feed from uh, has the firebox vent that is used to regulate the airflow in the firebox once you have an established fire and there's a top vent for the reburn chamber and this basically allows air flow into the reburn chamber to assist in uh, reburning the gases that uh, pass through the combustor. And lastly, if you can kind of see here, there is a little square peg that you insert that into, and that operates the bypass gate. And the bypass gate is open, and it is now, basically, you know, as you would kind of, if this thing was up, you would be turning it towards yourself. If you're turning it away from yourself or a righty, that closes it. When the bypass gate is open, the, uh, the smoke and the gases go directly out the flue and up the chimney. When the bypass gate is closed, the gases are directed through the combustor where they burn again the chamber and then they go out the flue. So let me see if I can kind of show you here inside how this works. Turn my flashlight on here. Okay. The bypass gate is now open. So all of the smoke and the gases go right up the chimney. You want to keep this open when you're uh, when you're starting a fire or restoking a fire. And of course, you know you want to open it before you load again. Otherwise, you're going to get a big face full of smoke. And here it is closed. That is closed off, and then that forces the gas through this baffle. And underneath that baffle is a circular honeycombed object very similar to a catalytic converter in your vehicle. The honeycombs are impregnated or coated with um, precious metals 
which uh, are activated by temperatures exceeding 500 degrees. And when that happens, uh, they pass through there, and um, the smoke and the unburnt gases from the fire are burnt again. And then the temperature in this thing really starts to climb. Uh, that might not be the most scientific uh, explanation, but that's basically how I understand it. Bear with me here. So to start a fire from a cold stove, the stove has been out since probably 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. We don't burn constantly because, frankly, it would be just too warm, warm in here. Sometimes even in the dead of winter, it can get so warm in here, I'll start opening up windows. Um, my wife likes it warm. I definitely don't like being freezing cold, but um, I tend to like it on the cool side. So <laughs> when it gets too warm, I do something about it. But the stove is cold, it's been cleaned out, if you can kind of tell. The first thing I'm going to do is you know, I'll close and latch the side door. And you want to make sure that the bypass gate is open. So, lefty, turning it towards yourself, opens the bypass gate, righty tighty, closes the bypass gate. So, we want to have it open right now. We're starting a fire. You want to make sure that the upper chamber, the reburn chamber vent is closed. I generally tr close the firebox vent as well when I'm first starting it. I might open it up a little bit once the fire starts to get going, but basically you want to open the bottom vent to get a good downdraft going from underneath. Now you use this little tool here. This is used for uh, operating the uh, shaker grates on the bottom. But it also has a little key here as well, which the brass handle one does too, but this is I find this a little easier to do with the rotation. So you want to open up this bottom vent three full rotations. So one, two, three. And that's going to allow us to have a good downdraft. The next part is pretty simple. Obviously, you want to uh, you want to make sure you have good seasoned wood. We burn a lot of ash around here because unfortunately it's all dying from the ash borer beetle. Um, good seasoned wood is, uh, is key. The goal is 20%. I split this piece here and just split this a few minutes ago. It's about 19%. So that's what we want. Uh, that means that this is going to burn well. So I just kind of put that in there first. All I use that for is just to kind of hold the kindling in place. Keep it from falling forward. I gave you some rolled up to, uh, newspaper. I almost said toilet paper. <laughs> rolled up newspaper. And I'm just going to line the back of that. This is my tinder. This will catch really easily. Again, there's lots of different ways to start a fire. Um, it's not really particular in this model. This is just how I do it because I like to just light the fire and walk away. And it just, you know, it's pretty much established in a few minutes. There, I'll go ahead and add some uh, kindling, which are just small splits of the same ash wood that we're burning. Line that on top of there. I want to pack it too tightly because I want to, you know, allow some of the flames to get through there. small piece on top because if the kidney burns quickly a little piece there will catch and just falls down on top and starts to establish a nice uh, bed of coals. So again, bypass gate is open and I just light from the bottom. Okay, I just filled the lighter with butane. So, where was I? Light from the bottom. Pretty easy. Generally, with these, they have three doors. I load the initial first wood from the front. It's just easier that way, and you clean out. And then once the fire is established, I just feed it from the side door. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this up. That's closed. And we're just going to let that, that tinder bed catch. 
All right, it's probably been about a minute, maybe two minutes now. It's definitely uh. Well, at this point, there isn't really much that needs to be done, other than just slowly feed it smaller pieces of wood until you have a nice coal bed established. Kindling's still going there. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. I have some smaller pieces of kindling, or larger pieces of kindling rather, that I can feed in there too. But I might take a couple of other splits and make them a little bit smaller. Okay, welcome back. It's probably been about 20 or 25 minutes since I uh, first lit the stove. Perhaps a little longer, I don't know. It has been more than a half an hour. I lost track of time. Um, I just checked the temperature of the catalyst catalytic combustor and it is uh, slightly above 500 degrees so at this point in time I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, sh shut off the lower va lower air vents and open the upper air vents let me show you the temperature gauge above that above the, uh, the catalytic combustor I'm trying to get it to focus not focusing. I apologize for the video quality. Alright, so basically that, that black band along the bottom, anything below that is 500. Above that is a silver band that is from 500 to 1500. That's basically the reburn temperature band. If you exceed that, obviously you're going to blow out your stove and below that the uh, combustor won't really work properly, you know, just gumming up. But we are above 500 degrees, probably about 530, 540 maybe. So, I'm going to go ahead and do what I need to do to change this. So, make sure I get everything in focus here. First thing I'm going to do is... I do want to note that I do have this uh, firebox, vent, firebox vent slightly open right now. Just maybe one, one and a half rotations. So I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to open the upper vent, which is the reburn chamber vent, two full, rota two full rotations. One. Two. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and close the bypass the gate. Righty tighty. And that's pretty much it. At this point in time, the temperature, the temperature gauge just hits above the catalytic combustor will slowly start to climb. And the stove will also uh, thusly put out a lot more heat, radiant heat. Okay, welcome back. So, the stove's probably been going for about 40 minutes now, and it's pretty warm. The buster's probably about 1100 degrees, pretty steady. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load it up. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, you know what, I already opened the bypass gate before I start this video. So the bypass gate is open. So I open the side gate. Yeah, it's going pretty good. Just burn some of the coals. Get a nice coal bed there. So let's go ahead and load another log up on here. Now what I, what I like to do when I load it each time, I just kind of like to let that wood burn a little bit. So I'm going to open the firebox down here a good bit. Give that some air. Let that just kind of char up that round here. Because the main thing you're trying to fight with, um, with burning wood stoves, even with ones that have catalytic combustors, is creosote build up in your chimney. Now I tend to sweep mine about twice per year, once before burning season and once kind of right about now. I would do it now, but um, it's kind of slippery on my roof, and um, 
I may have mentioned in other videos or posts that um, I'm about three months recovering from surgery for ACL reconstruction. So getting on an icy roof is probably not a good idea right now. So I'll wait until the ice melts and I'll get up there and sleep it. But this is just kind of a safety precaution. Every once in a while, I'll just do this, let it run wide open when it's real hot. And just kind of let the fire burn off any uh, creosote inside there. So I'm going to let this burn for a minute or two before I go ahead and uh, close the bypass gate and start the reburn. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. Okay, so maybe a minute or two has passed. Go ahead and shut this uh, vent down now here. And close the bypass gate. At this point in time, maybe an hour has passed with the fire, and it's starting to get pretty warm in here. The stove top is at a hot, well, the stove stone is about 180 degrees. The stove top is, you know, still maintaining around 600, 700. And that's good. And the fire brick is starting to heat up as well. And I can, it's, it's warm in here, so. All we have to do now is basically just maintain the coal bed, steadily feed it, and um, that's really all it takes. It was 66 degrees when I got home this afternoon, and it will, I'm not sure what it is now, but probably about time when it gets to bed, it may be around 70, 71 degrees. So that's pretty much how you start a cold. Dutch West India Federal Airtight Stove and get it up to operating temperature and keeping you nice and toasty in the dead of winter. Hope this helps. Thank you.